We are continuing with our episodes on mental health. This time, we shall examine anxiety. A couple of years ago, there was a student in my school, a well-behaved boy who would submit his assignments on time and would listen to what the teachers have to say, never gave them trouble, very disciplined, but he had seemed to have had some problem. When it was the time for assessment, he would under some pretext, remain absent. For some reason, the parents probably ignored it or just played along and became enablers. We don't know. But in the younger classes, it didn't seem to matter so much as it did in the older classes. As it came to the ninth and the tenth later on, we had several meetings with the parents, but the parents refused to see the problem refused to go to the psychiatrist. And finally, would you believe it? We got a breakthrough from a film personality. Well, she didn't meet them, but she went public with her confession that she was undergoing depression. I'm talking about Deepika Padukone. And that seemed to have made some dent into the, into the minds of the parents. And they accepted. If something can happen to somebody like Deepika Padukone, then it can happen to our child. They went to the psychiatrist. The child was already in the 10th, mind you. It was just a couple of months before the boards. The psychiatrist advised them to drop the ear. Now, at this point, I think it's time for Monica to come in. Monica, as you know, is our school counselor. Monica, did this child have examination anxiety? What is anxiety? So before, again, before I start talking about anxiety, I would like our listeners to understand that whatever I say is going to be a very general discussion on the symptoms of anxiety and in no way a diagnosis. So if you are seeing similar symptoms in yourself, the best thing to do would be to go to a mental health professional and get yourself officially diagnosed. Now, to answer your question, ma'am, uh, it does sound like the child had exam anxiety because his constant absence during the assessment points to that. Uh, but more on that, would we would be able to only understand it once we talk to the child, once we talk to, uh, once we try to understand what kind of symptoms he was facing during the uh, exams and what situation he was in at home. Now, anxiety generally means a sense of worry, a sense of constant worry, a sense of restlessness, and uh, constant nervousness about how the situation is going to uh, come out. So what kind of result is the child, or generally any person in a stressed situation is going to face. So anxiety generally happens when there is a, a fear of the unknown, if you are in an unknown situation or an unfamiliar situation, that's when you start feeling nervous. And if that nervousness becomes so much that you're not able to face a situation at all, or you find out, or you try to find out ways to avoid that situation, that could be a symptom of anxiety disorder. All of us at some time or other face the fear of the examination. Does it mean that we are undergoing anxiety? Not necessarily. Uh, usually stress leads to nervousness, stress leads to anxiety. But if we are still able to face that situation despite the anxiety, it's not an anxiety disorder. But if what happens is that anxiety gets the better of us and we are not able to face the situation at all, our functionality gets affected that's when it could be an anxiety disorder and needs professional intervention. So what you're trying to tell us here is that every individual undergoes anxiety at some point or other, and that does not mean that we are suffering from anxiety disorder. Yes. So anxiety disorder is different from having bouts of anxiety at some time or other? Yes, absolutely. Then what is this anxiety disorder? What causes it? Yeah. So anxiety disorder is something that stops you from functioning like you regularly would. 
okay so it it there are different forms of anxiety like we spoke about that child who was showing symptoms of anxiety exam anxiety some people have anxiety of being in situations where they from where they may not have an escape okay so open places or uh, you know uh, maybe heights. traveling yes heights you know something like heights so all these are various kinds of anxiety now it could be caused by just a person's general disposition so we all are different by nature and there's a possibility that some of us are more prone to being anxious than others so when one child is just having uh, having some butterflies about exams but is able to still go ahead and give the exam properly uh, maybe feeling nervous at the same time another child might be sweating or going to the washroom constantly not being able to remember what he has studied and he must have studied hard but because he's so anxious uh, he's not able to remember anything so it could be an inherent nature of the person or it could be the environment so somebody might come from a very high pressure environment where failure to perform could have serious consequences and that's why that person might be facing so much anxiety that they are not able to uh, attend attempt the exam at all the others might be coming from a more relaxed environment so they are able to they know that even if the results are bad it's not the end of the world and they will uh, get a chance to to improve themselves or they know that they will be supported uh, in their home environment so it could be the person's inherent nature that could be the cause of anxiety it could be the person's environment or it could be a mix of both so in other words nature and nurture both have a hand in this in the development of this particular uh, disorder yes yes it looks like that from research yes so then how is it that parents can be educated that um, they need to know what they need to do so that they don't drive their children towards this disorder yes so the first thing would be acceptance of the child and understanding that exams are not the be all and the end all that acceptance needs to come uh, also trying to help the child explore uh, their capabilities so a lot of times what happens is for parents exam uh, becomes everything marks become everything and they may go they may not understand what the child is going through uh, uh, during exams and they may end up pressuring the child in the name of having high expectations from the child in the name of you know telling themselves that my child has potential he just doesn't know it and it's my job to uh, push the child so that he realizes his potential so the first thing that parents need to be aware is uh, the acceptance that even though the child may not be uh, very may not be leaning towards exams he his talent may be somewhere else and accepting that exams are not everything that supporting the child may be better than pressuring the child in getting performance uh, in getting a good performance so parents need to also have an open communication to the child and listen to the child when they say that uh, i am feeling very nervous and i don't know what's going to happen in an exam and a simple statement from the parent that okay whatever happens we are here to support you and we are here for you can release the pressure tremendously uh, from the child maybe leading to the child performing better maybe reducing uh, the nervousness that the child faces and in and through that improving the child's performance so parents need to be aware need to have open communication need to be uh, psycho educated about what anxiety is what the symptoms are and if the child is showing any symptoms of those what is causing that is it something from the family is it something at school is it the child's inherent nature parents need to be aware of all these things this brings to mind one um, uh, advertisement based on social cause i don't remember which company did this the children they the the uh, the scene opens to the parents saying bye to the children do well in your test etc etc and then they are escorted to another classroom by this, by the teacher and the teacher announces that they are going to answer the same test paper 
that their children are answering at that time. Initially, there were a lot of protests from the parents. Oh, I did this so many years ago. I don't remember, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting late for work. But the teacher was firm. So the parents ended up answering it. After that, the reaction of the parents changed. So there were some parents who said, who had got only four on 20, five on 20. So all that, you've got 19. Where did that one mark go? Yeah. That changed. That changed to... We understand you work so hard. There was an open, there was an acceptance on the part of the parents because they had gone through the test and they realized how difficult it is for them to answer. Therefore, yeah. it would be as difficult for their children to answer. Yes. So this was a social experiment. I don't think uh, parents would be kind enough to the schools <laughs> if we were to do this. Yeah. But it's worth a thought. We can yes. probably show that particular video to the parents and make them understand yes. if things go out of hand. Anyway, yeah. coming back to this, can um, anxiety be related to depression? So uh, anxiety and depression a lot of times are comorbid. That means they can happen simultaneously, but there is not enough research to prove that one may be the cause of the other. So what happens but the sad part is a lot of times we do see that uh, people who are anxious even children who are anxious also tend to be depressed maybe because they are not getting help with anxiety and the resulting uh, difficulty is that children who have both anxiety and depression are very are, are more resistant to treatment as compared to children who are just facing one of the two uh, concerns so they may not be causing each other, but they do go hand in hand a lot of the times. I see. Um, does this anxiety have an effect on our body? It does. It does to a large extent. It does. Uh, the body releases something called a stress hormone when we are anxious. And this may cause a lot of unexplained uh, somatic symptoms is what we say. So headaches, stomachache, nausea, diarrhea, Anything unexplained, any physical unexplained uh, uh, illness could be caused by anxiety. The good part is that nowadays a lot of physicians are arming themselves with these uh, uh, th this information. And if they if they find that somebody is coming to them with a stomachache or a headache and medication is not helping, they often direct uh, them to a mental health professional to find out whether there is any kind of anxiety behind these unexplained somatic symptoms. So yes, anxiety does have an effect on our body. It lowers our immunity. It makes us feel less energetic. So it's very important that uh, unexplained uh, bodily illnesses be taken seriously and uh, a, a, a mental health professional be consulted so that if there's any underlying mental health concerns that is found out and worked upon. There was one student, I remember, um, had uh, unusual tremor, tremors in the hand. Mm. The tremors were so severe that he could not even hold a pen or a pencil and write. Oh, okay. Okay, this could be, if there are no other uh, uh, physical cause, if, if everything has been examined in terms of the tremors and... There, have, there has been no physical cause that has been found out. It could be related to a mental health concern. Yeah, they yes. did go to a psychiatrist. Yeah. And uh, the, the psychiatrist said the child was undergoing mm. anxiety. Yes. But uh, somebody also said they should go to a neurologist. So they went to the neurologist who ruled out any other issue huh. with the child. Yeah. He said it is all psychological and there is nothing wrong with the child yes. physiologically. Yes. We have a term for this. It's called psychosomatic concern so anything psychological comes out somatically that means bodily and this is one of the examples of that yes so finally the parents were relieved mm. what they didn't realize is this psychosomatic treatment will take them longer yeah than just yes than just medication at, yes. at least half the problem is solved because they have yeah. done the diagnosis and yeah. they know what is exactly is the problem with the child absolutely now Coming to the next point, which is most important and critical. How can we help the children with anxiety? 
Okay. Can yoga and meditation help? Yes. So anything that relaxes the body helps with anxiety because anxiety at the core of it causes a lot of muscle tension. Uh, if if our listeners could just maybe think about a time when they were anxious and uh, check with themselves whether they are facing any kind of muscle tension or any kind of tightness in any part of the body, relaxing that helps in reducing the anxiety. So yoga, because yoga is all about relaxing the body and listening to the body. Meditation is about awareness of the body and the mind. All this helps with anxiety uh, because they ultimately they are helping with awareness and they are helping uh, relax the body. So yes, yoga and meditation to a large extent help build this awareness and help with anxiety also. Um, I remember you're mentioning some uh, technique to relax the body. Can we have yes. a quick demo of that? Of course, of course. So uh, if if our listeners, and ma'am, if you also could take 10 seconds, 10 quick seconds to run a scan through your entire body and find out if there is any tension in any part of the body. It shouldn't, it should be a quick scan to just understand if there is any tension right from your toes up to your head, a quick scan. And uh, I will give you a countdown. And you can just run that scan. Okay, so let's start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now that you have identified the tension in your body, I will again give you a countdown. All you have to do is take a few deep breaths. Focus on that part of the body and just let go of the tension. Let it loose. Just feel it being relaxed. Okay. So I'll start the countdown now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. The point of this exercise is if you are in a situation where you can't sit down and spend a lot of time to relax yourself, if you are in the situation which is anxiety inducing, this quick scan and this quick relaxation helps you gain control of yourself, helps reduce anxiety to some extent, and it helps you get back into the situation and face the situation uh, as best as you can. Now, I understand that it sounds very simple, but it may not be easy because remembering to do this in the situation is something that comes with practice. So the more uh, you practice, the better you will get at doing this quick uh, exercise to relax yourself in, in a stressful situation. So what you're saying is when you're, in, when you're anxious, most of the time, you cannot think rationally. Reasoning yeah. gives you. Yes. Yeah. So you will not be able to remember. Now, yes. there's something I wanted to share with everybody. We have a meditation session in the morning in the school. When the offline mode was on, the children would drop whatever they are doing. The teachers, children, everybody together in the class would meditate. Now, in an online mode, we still try to do it, but most of the time the videos are off, so we don't know whether the children yes. are doing it or not doing it, but we're not going to give up. Yeah. We'll continue to do what we can, even if we can spread the message to 2% of the people, that would be worth our while. Absolutely. Where do you find the professionals to, uh, to get in touch with? This yes. is one question which I should have asked earlier. Where do you find the professionals? Yes. So. Uh, if you have children going to school, you can approach the school counselor and they will be very happy to give you references. You can ask your family doctor as well. They usually have uh, the references of a few psychiatrists and a few uh, psychologists on their list as well. Or you can send in an email to us and we will be happy to give you a reference if you feel that you need to consult a mental health professional. So I think with this, we come to the end of our episode. 
Um, if you have any queries, please do write to us. And we'll be more than happy to answer. And um, you can send your queries to a story for your query. But what I see is that nobody really wants to write in and ask a question. Well, in that case, you send a message to us. You can send a voice message on Spotify and we'll be more than happy to answer you. Yeah, but do that. We are here to help you. Thank you very much. Let those queries keep coming in, please. And that's all for today. Together we say, stay fit, stay healthy. We will see you next week. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.